How's it going, internets? I hope you're having a lovely day. It's that time again. It's time to get into some animation. It's time to get our imagination running wild. It's time to get that uh, creativity all sparked up, and it's time to get inspired. And today's inspiration comes from John Richard Flanagan. And if you're not familiar with him, um, A, check over there. And B, uh, just a little rundown. He worked for Colliers and Cosmopolitan. He did uh, work on early DC Comics stuff. He was uh, really a, a, a phenomenal artist and isn't uh, as well recognized or known as I think his work definitely um, would lead him to be. Uh, definitely in the line of kind of um, like a, uh, a comic stylings of like a Norman Rockwell maybe. Uh, definitely kind of that era of influence and the like Loomis and Bridgman and all that stuff. Uh, early uh, about 1920s to 1930s was when he was really um, pushed out a lot of uh, phenomenal work and uh, the cool thing about him unfortunately there's just not uh, a ton of information about him because like I said he's a little uh, less well known than uh, some of his contemporaries and everything but a cool thing about him is um, he originally was from Australia and learned and, and kind of developed a lot of his skills then and then wanted to to do something more with his life so he moved to America and um, where uh, there's a, there's an interesting kind of memoir that I found of his, which is where I found the quote that I want to share with you guys today, and um, he talked about how you know he had dreams of creating these these fantasy worlds and all this stuff, and then it ended up um, doing illustrations for like soup cans and stuff. And I think a lot of us who are in the creative um, industry or who want to be further down the road or whatever, have definitely dealt with stuff like that, where you know. You might want to do one thing, but then you end up doing a different thing for money, and it's definitely, uh, you know, follow your passion or be able to eat something. You know, there's there's definitely those days that we all go through. Um, but anyways, I want to share this quote with you guys, and then we'll look through a little bit of his illustration. And he said, all the hosts of imagination found in me a willing disciple. And I think that is such, first of all, I love the way people um, spoke uh, back Previous to the current generation, I feel like there's definitely a degradation of our language, and uh, I'm not saying I'm perfect at it at all. I, I definitely would love to be more eloquent, and I apologize for uh, any lacking in my own speech. Um, but I love the way uh, people used to speak. It's just it's such a richer, more full, more intelligent um, language that people seem to work with, they seem like they were a lot more cautious with their words, where nowadays anyone can go on and type anything about anything and it just degrades our language, but that's a whole other topic. Anyways, uh, all the hosts of imagination found in me a willing disciple, I think is a phenomenal way um, and mindset to have is that you know whatever is imaginative whatever is creative whatever outlet it may be whatever opportunity we have we're a willing disciple to study in that or to learn in that and to grow in that and i think that's uh for me it's definitely um with uh jr flanagan or jack flanagan um who's also named uh definitely he's new to me i haven't really studied his stuff uh for a long time but i'm trying to find um different people uh, often too to study so I can get different ideas and I think that's kind of where this quote goes along with that it's all the hosts of imagination and you know whatever it may be if it's animation if it's illustration if it's music if it's you know painting whatever it may be um, that you're interested in or that I'm interested in that that we become willing disciples willing to learn willing to uh, stumble and fall and pick ourselves back up and continue on uh, so that being said, let's go through a couple of his drawings here, or illustrations there. Just phenomenal layout, uh, color and composition, and definitely uh, strong anatomy in all this as well. But I really love this. It's very illustrative and um, definitely has that uh, more of a, a 1930s style of illustration as well that I personally just am definitely drawn to. I think it's a commercialization of um, phenomenal art and I don't mind art being commercialized. I think that uh, if there's strong um, structure and creativeness in the art that it doesn't matter if it's uh, for a magazine or if it's for a museum. To me, if it's good, it's good and it doesn't matter what the reasoning for. But this one was one of the ones that I really loved of his. I just think it's 
really strong posing, nice layout, and I'm a sucker for any sort of um, kind of mid tones or that uh, kind of that that Da Vinci Michelangelo sketching style look where you don't really do as precise work, and then usually it's on kind of a, like a vintage style paper. And uh, I mean, of course, it would have been you know the paper that they had available at the time, but. Uh, and this is uh, one of the ones from Action Comics, which, again, he worked for DC back in the day. And I love all old comic stuff, too. I'm just a fan of anything creative, really. This one I thought was really cool, just all the different buried heads and everything, too. Um, so anyways, I will... Um, there's not too much that I can link to down below for more about him, but I'll find something that I can share with you guys. So if you want to read more, check out more of his stuff. I'll definitely have that in the comments below, and uh, or the description below. And let's get into our animation. This is the animatic rig. It's a free rig you can grab over Creative Crash. I've never used this rig and if, you're, uh, if it's your first time watching one of these videos, thanks for uh, joining us for sure today. I hope you guys uh, are enjoying it so far. But what we'll be doing for the rest of the video is we give ourselves 48 frames. It's two seconds of animation and uh, I go out and I find a different rig that I've never used that's a new uh, free asset that you guys can try out if you've never done this one either and uh, see where we get from, from there. Uh, over, the, over the course of the video we'll do a little bit of just kind of hanging out with me while I animate a little bit of instruction and overall uh, my goal is in doing these videos that uh, you either maybe learn something along the way or at least get inspired to go off and create something of your own and uh, if you end up doing that definitely share back so I can see all the wonderful stuff that you guys are uh, learning and growing with and developing in your skills for whatever medium it may be um, every day as well. So that being said, let's go ahead and delve right into uh, what we're going to be doing today. First thing I want to do is create a polygon primitives cube just so I have a base here so I can kind of start doing my layout. And I was thinking what might be fun that I haven't done in a little while is uh, do carrying something. I thought that might be fun to do with this rig and we'll have to see how it works here. Let's see, that's going to be the main route, and this is probably just specifically there, so that's fine. We're going to push that forward, and rotate that. It's a rotate X that would be kind of the up and down, but it looks like in this rig it's going to be rotate Y, and that's totally fine. Um, so what I'm going to do here is I think I'm going to actually switch this arm back into uh, IK, so I'll zero that out, and then we'll bring that down over here, and then let's go ahead and rotate it down over here, and let's go ahead and create a polygon primitives. Let's do a cube here. It would just be, uh, you know, like I said, carrying a little box here. It's probably bigger than I want to do, so let's scrunch it down a little bit more. And bring it over. And let's universally minimize it a little bit more. And uh, zero out the translate uh, X there, so it's right in the middle. Let's make it a little bit fatter and a little bit shorter. storytelling pose on this guy. And let's go ahead and grab all of those and we'll rotate them down there. And let's grab the thumb. I love it when they give you like the actual uh, X, Y, and Z attributes in the fingers so you can really get some fun posing there. I think Probably do the second one. Let's leave the knuckles down. We'll do the second digit here. Second part. 
part of the digits there that are really cupping the box there. Make it for a little bit more natural. We'll go ahead and bring the box down a little bit more. And then we'll adjust our posing here a little bit more as well. as well, and we'll get a good pose on there. And then we'll parent that stuff, and then we'll get started on animating the walk here. Got to go. Let's try and keep that palm somewhere that we like it here. Just for some variety, it's actually do this one more like we had originally had planned on that first hand working. We can compare to give us a little bit more well-rounded out idea of what we like there. Sorry about that. And maybe we should push this hand forward a little bit more as well. I want to feel like there's weight and we're getting that little bit of tension there here. And let's go grab up these feet here. And pull them back and try and get that nice little bit of line of action.
I feel like we want to pigeon toe them a little bit, so I'll uh, figure which one they go. X and Y. I keep forgetting they're kind of reversed on this rig. Yeah, let's kind of pigeon toe them a little bit. I'll just to uh, allow for the weight a little bit better. We want to sell the pose that this would be. That there's some weight to this box. So we've got a little bit of tension going on here. Got the um, hips swayed through there, which gives a nice line of action throughout as well. And all right, let's go ahead and save our file real quick. And let's start building our constraints here. So let's create uh, a locator. Punch that right into the middle of the box there. Actually, let's do it on the wrist here. Shoulder controllers, we should drop the shoulders here as well, I think. Okay, maybe not that much, just a little bit. Okay, do outliner to go show on the wall. Here's our locator. It's repairing. To the hands of the hands of the box. Let's do the hands to the box. So, what we're going to do is we'll grab the hand and control click the locator and parent it. And then we can grab the locator and that'll move the hand as well. And then we'll grab the box and we'll control click the locator and parent that. And now, if we did that right, we should be able to select the. Again, remember the hand is still connected to the body, it's not going to totally break, so it's good. So that should adjust when we move the body. And let's do another locator. Create another locator. And we'll punch that. And the reason we're doing this is so that we can still move um, the hand and move the box independently of each other, but they're still parented together so they will move but we can do smaller movements within versus if we just parented the hands directly to the box or the box directly to the hands we couldn't do any small movements on there it would just all be together as one but this way we can do this and we can do like slight movements with one while still um, connecting them just adds basically like a link uh, in a chain so that we can have the two things connected but not completely fused together Okay, so I'll we'll grab the wrist there, control click the locator, parent that, grab the locator, get that, okay, and then we'll get the locator, and we'll shift click the cube, and we'll parent that. Okay, so now if we did that correctly, we have the box, and both hands are moving with it. Okay, again, we're, um, these hands, uh, the, because of how they're set up, they are IK, but they're not completely, um, some IK hands will completely like disconnect from them, but you can see that the controller is moving from that, and that's what we want, really. So, uh, let's grab everything, sands, um, and go from zero, actually, no, let's do this, go from zero, I'll grab this. here, but I think we'll just do this rather than selecting everything. And then we'll grab the hands here. And we'll go ahead and set that. And we'll grab the box and set that. Okay. Now, okay. now let's start building our walk. Uh, let's go 48 frames here. And let's grab the feet. Go 12 frames forward. That foot, let's see, probably a little bit bigger than the other one, so I'll do that, that big of a step. I'm gonna grab the root here and we'll push it. Actually, let's grab the root and the box and we'll go ahead and move them together here. Okay, and we'll grab the next step, set a key there, push that forward again. 
of trying to keep the spacing similar on each of the steps so it's not like one big step, one little step. And that's definitely something you can do, but for the sake of what we're doing here, I want it to seem fairly even. Okay, and set that one forward again. And as you can see, the knee's doing something funky. It's because there's an actual knee controller, so we're going to want to move those as well. I'm not going to really worry about that right now, but it is definitely going to be something that we'll go back into. And now I'm going to do it because now it's just going to distract me. Okay, I'll just punch this forward. So. Okay, that's fine. And go here, set that step, move this one forward, and grab the hips and box and move forward again. Okay, so let's just take a quick look at this and see how. Okay, it's janky, but it's uh, it'll work for right now. So let's go ahead and save our file again. Just Control S, and we are using Autodesk Maya 2014, which there will be a link to in the description below in case I hadn't mentioned that already. And then we're going to open up our graph editor, and let's look at the Translate Z. This is the root controller, mainly the hips, um, and we're just going to make that uh, constant. So there's an even amount of movement from screen left to screen right. right now we were getting a little bit of like a gap. Yeah, it feels pretty good. Okay, so let's go ahead and save our file again. And let's go ahead and uh, get those passing positions set up on those feet. So let's go ahead and lock in what we already had for our keys on the feet. And let's go ahead and raise that up. Drop it down. Raise it up. Drop it down. And let's go ahead and rotate it. off we are going to lock in all the keys we already had and we'll do a passing position and I want to keep these steps not super high just because if there's you know a lot of weight here wouldn't be doing really big steps as well and it's not this has to be completely heavy but normally if you're carrying something heavy um, it wouldn't uh, you wouldn't be able to make really big, goofy, high-stepping steps, so... Okay, so what I was thinking instead, we'll try this. We'll uh, drag it back, lift it up, and then flop it down. I think that might be more of what we're looking for for this one. Otherwise, it just didn't... So, let's see. Yeah, that feels a little better.
you can see there's definitely a difference between how those feet are moving. This one feels like it's uh, landing a little more precise, where the other one feels like it's dragging a little more. So let's add the toe in here, because I know that we don't have that going, so that'll definitely add another. And then we'll look at it, kind of compare the two, and decide which which way we want to lean with these steps. I think I like uh, this one a little more. Um, I do like the dragginess of the other one, but I feel like if I was lifting a heavy box, I would want to be more precise with my steps. Um, so I think that's what we'll go with. And we'll still add that drag, but we'll just do a little bit of lift so it doesn't feel like it's just kind of sliding into place, but that it is actually placing the foot down. And then we'll kind of compare the two and make sure that we've got pretty even balance between the two steps. Because this one right now feels like it's lifting way too much here. that the arms are kind of lock and popping so but I'm not gonna worry too much about that right now because right now we're just looking at the hips so let's see rig's kind of got a different uh, set of axes, axis C, axis I. Okay, so we do a little bit of side to side, and that should be translate Y here. And again, we have to be careful about those arms intersecting, but we want to build in everything, and then we'll get into uh, Thank you. 
so I'll scale back again. Let's go ahead and see that now. Okay, now let's do a little bit of uh, rotate X to favor the front planted foot there on the other side. And again, we'll rotate the uh, chest to make sure we're offsetting this stuff as well. But because of how this chest and hips are set up, we don't need to worry about that as much as we normally would. Because this is more of like a uh, IK hips and chest, even though they're constrained to this main root controller. And there's still some variation that you get from there, but that's pretty static. Okay, and let's go ahead and... rotating the uh, chest to the opposite of where the hips are uh, rotating so that we get that little bit of twist in there so let's see. Okay, it's feeling all right. Let's clean it up though a little bit more. So I'm not doing my graph editor work on screen very much today. Let's pull it back up there. So we get that little bit of squash and stretch as the hips are favoring one side. I think we might need to do a little more translation here though. Well, the timing to not be the same as how the hips when the hips are going up and down. So let's see if that feels about right. Yeah, I think it's the other way. That's what I was thinking. But we just have to be aware of those elbow pops. Because those are gonna get a little too janky. See so, yeah, that get that little bit of drag in the box. Maybe we just won't lift it up as much. So it won't like uh, raise up nearly as much, but we'll still get that drag down.
And that's why we did the locator, so that we can do the hands differently from a box. So we can maybe do a little bit up here. Maybe make those pops not as bad. A little bit down here. Now again, we have to be careful with this, because we still want to feel like there's some contact with, like it's holding it. But I think if we do this right, we could uh, avoid some of the poppiness in those elbows here. I do it that way. Otherwise, we got to kind of go in by ones and really key in, which for the time being, we give kind of a lot ourselves for these videos. I don't know if that's something. Shoulders, not elbows. What am I thinking? Tip the shoulders down. Yeah, I'll give a little bit of variation to it too, and hopefully get away from some of those while still keeping the contact there. Yeah. And again, I don't mind getting some of those straights, but we're just kind of locking and then popping out of them, and that doesn't look as good. So let's see. Still get that weight there. Okay. And okay. And let's do a little bit of compression in the chest here. And we'll offset it by what we do. Uh, or this is the hips with the chest. Uh, mine's a little scrambled. So sorry about that. And let's clean that up. Just do a little bit so we get a little bit of that compression, give a little bit of squashiness to the belly so it doesn't feel so rigid. And we get a little life in there. And again, just gonna kind of do the opposite here. in the hand here, so I'll go ahead and lift it up a little bit more, and I'll go ahead and bring those fingers out a little bit more here, just so we get kind of some keep alive or some change of pose throughout there so those hands don't feel too rigid, but we still want to keep them, um, ah, okay, all right, sorry about that, phone's ringing off the hook, door's going, okay, so I see we got a little bit of variation now in the hand going on, so it's not completely locked off. We'll go ahead and maybe we'll do a little bit of drag on the thumb here too. Hand locked in here. And now 
let's go ahead. We didn't key the fingers when we were first doing this, so let's go back. Just redoing the same thing, but for some reason we didn't key those initial poses so we wouldn't have that change of movement there. So it's not just a continual movement that we have a little bit of ease in and ease out there. too much and it's delayed about two frames. Just want a little teeny bit of this just so there's some movement in that thumb and it can be kind of affected by how those hips are coming. And then we'll do a little bit in the head, and I think I'm all right for today. And let's go ahead and lock in again all of these fingers, since we didn't do that to start with. And the reason we didn't select everything and key it um, like we kind of normally do when we start off is because of the way we have the parenting set up. I don't want to lock in the parenting and then go through and find all those individual things. It just takes a little while. So that was a little bit of a different kind of a decision there for it, but uh, let's go ahead and maybe we'll do a little bit of down on this hand overall. And again, same kind of thing, we're just going to hold that first pose a little bit and then have the movement on a shorter amount of time and then go back into it. Pieces of the finger. Okay, and then 
let's go ahead and we've got to pull this one out a little bit more there. Okay, and I'll grab all the tips and all of the mids. of the fingers and the mids. Go ahead and uh, delay them frame. And all the tips will delay them one more frame. And then we'll grab everything from the index finger, we'll push it forward a frame, and everything on the pinky, and we'll delay it a frame. So let's go ahead and Just a little bit of up and down here. And we'll do that on different timing than we had the other thumb as well. But still same kind of idea there. So let's go and look at that now. much up and not enough down, so let's go ahead again and do this. Okay, and let's look at the tip here, and let's do a little bit of drag there. This is probably too much, so we might scale it back, but just so we have some life in the tip of um, there too. Again, way too much, so we'll just scale it back there. Make sure we're still recording with all of them. There we go. Okay. Holy. Well, that's part of uh, part of life. Sometimes you gotta work through distractions and try and stay focused. So that's a good lesson too. Still probably a little too much, and I don't think we did any tip of the thumb on the other side, so we're going to need to uh, sprinkle that in on the other side here. Okay, seems like there's a little too much side to side in the head, and we'll want to do a little bit of up and down there, so let's go ahead and look at that. And we're just kind of rotating to offset from what we did with the rotate C there.
probably too much, and I think we're going to want to delay it by a frame or two as well. Just so we have a little bit of up and down in the head since we've got some going in the chest and everything here too. set up the rig sometimes. Oh my God. So let's go ahead and look at that again. Alright, find a better camera angle there. I think the side view is probably best for something like this. Yeah, I feel like that works. Let's go ahead and take a look at where we started. We were looking at uh, John Richard Flanagan and all his amazing illustration. And then uh, his quote was, All the hosts of imagination found in me a willing disciple. And I think that's a phenomenal mindset to have, to be open to being that disciple, that student, that uh, follower, that person who's just soaking up all of the information and the inspiration and all of the amazing uh, words of wisdom that have gone before and teachings of whatever um, medium it is that you, uh, you use to be creative. So I hope you guys like this one. Sorry, it was a little bit, uh, a little bit distracting for, uh, for me at least. So hopefully it wasn't for you guys. But I think that's a good lesson to learn too. That um, life's not always going to be where you can just sit down and devote, you know, huge chunks of time. Sometimes there's going to be things that come up. But to try to stay focused and work through um, distractions is a good lesson to learn as, uh, as a creator as well. And that's kind of why we do these videos, uh, where I just try and do them pretty much live. Again cut out a little bit of uh, stuff but but so you can see the ups and the downs you can see the successes you can see um, the failures and all that kind of stuff so that you guys feel like you have an art buddy out there that's uh, going through this struggle with you every day and uh, hopefully getting towards that uh, a great end goal for whatever it may be for you guys and uh, thanks again for all the likes and su uh, subscribes for all the comments uh, if you guys did end up uh, enjoying this one let me know down in the comments what you thought was really successful if there's things that you would have done different or different approaches definitely let me know that stuff as well too and if you do end up using this rig definitely share it back so I can see the uh, amazing shot you guys came up with and same goes for any sort of creation that you guys are doing I definitely want to see it so I can uh, throw you some praise and encouragement as well and that being said uh, you guys are awesome, totally believe in you, and we'll see you for some more animation tomorrow.